I think it's great that um, most new bilingual state signage nowadays and for many years now is bilingual with the Irish language words being printed as big as the English language words. This is fantastic, I think. And we have uh, b b b bilingual Irish English other, other services as well in many other ways. Like take, for instance, the automated uh, bilingual announcements on Dublin bus and bus air and buses and air and road trains, air and road air and trains. Uh, I think I think all these are great things. I just have one or two more questions, Eamon, before we discuss the 2021 amendment a bit of, of the Official Languages Act in a minute. Okay, just to talk about the overall act over the last 20 years, uh, are you disappointed uh, that road signs on main roads are still not covered by the act? And are you disappointed that most of the public health service is not great for a bilingual policy? Well, obviously, the uh, with exclusion of road signs, who, uh, which has their own peculiar and particular legislation, all of the signs are in public bodies, including the health service and so on, are covered under the Language uh, Act. Uh, and so would be, for example, recorded messages and so on. And that has had a huge effect. And the great thing about it is you don't have to be going asking them time and again. That's the law. If they don't comply you can make your complaint to the commissioner, they'll fight your cause for you then, and they'll be on the right side of the law. So it has had a very significant effect on the visibility of Irish. Um, as we know, in more recent times, the, the rules in relation to advertising to Irish as well as English uh, have been very, very effective. And you see that and you hear that on t radio and television all of the time. So these things are very, very effective. Interpersonal services are a lot more tricky for a whole lot of reasons. Uh, in some cases, it's difficult to get staff with Irish, particularly if you're talking about specialists. So it is complex and much more complex when it comes to interpersonal service. I am disappointed that there wasn't a more focused and strategic approach to that. The language planning that was provided for in the 2003 Act was meant to deal with that issue. But to be quite honest, in the intervening years, uh, you know, we were making great progress and then it seemed to come to, uh, to, to, to misquote my, my late colleague Brian Lennon to a shuttering halt in the last decade when, when the, uh, the downturn occurred and it had no connection with the downturn. I'm just, I'm just thinking as a guy as a public health service, I don't know a lot of hospitals for, like going from, from experience, but my but my knowledge of my nearest hospital beside me, Connolly Hospital in Blanchardstown, over the last several years, the signs on the actual campus itself of the hospital, most of them are bilingual, which is great, but from what I know, internally in the hospital, the vast majority, if not all of the, sci the signs are just in English. I'm just wondering, like, from a logistical point of view if you think we would ever see change on this and in relation to road signage? Yeah, well there are two separate issues. In relation to signage, any time you replace signage it had to be bilingual and in compliance with the Act. And I think as far as I can remember there was also a date by which if it didn't have to be replaced that signage would have to be replaced and made bilingual. Uh, so that was very well catered for and will you know, fully be implemented in time. Uh, one of the things, of course, is when you're introducing change, uh, we used to do it on the basis of uh, when the change was taking place. And the argument in favour of that was most signs only have a certain shelf life, but you didn't want to be accused of wasting a lot of money ripping down brand new signage that had been there before the Act and replacing it immediately with, with, with alternative signage. So that was the reason for that. Uh, I think, on the other hand, that we say Dublin Airport is a very good example of very, very good signage in the Irish language. And the other thing that was important, and you're right about the road signs, the thing that was important is that having experience of the road signs, and the rather farcical situation with road signs, uh, we insisted that the Irish was on top and in as visible, at least, uh, ink and colour and size as the uh, English language version. Uh, what happened on the road sign is historic, and there's an awful resistance in the Department of Transport to changing it. They use Italian script or a slightly fancy script 
and it's like the smaller script for the Irish. Now, what they must think is that Irish speakers have much better sight than English speakers, because obviously uh, the block upright script is easier to read at a greater distance, uh, and it's slightly bigger, therefore it's easier to read and see. Uh, and that's not equality. Um, the funny thing is, if you go to Wales, and none of us have any difficulty or find the roads in Wales different, or up in Scotland, you'll find that they're the same size, I, Irish or English, or in Welsh or in, in English, in the case of Wales, uh, and it doesn't seem to cause any difficulty, and all the arguments being put up at the Department of Transport do not appear to hold water.